Welcome back to the channel. And in today's Blender tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to make some really simple and fun iridescent materials. The first one is just gonna be this one here, which is kind of like a metallic one, very simple to do. And then we're just gonna do one that has some glass shaders. And um, the kind of cool thing about an iridescent material, and I'll quickly show you so you kind of get the idea here. It's not that it's just, just that it looks cool, but an iridescent material like this can change based on um, where you're kind of like looking from. So you can see here, as I move, it kind of like changes color. It's iridescent. And this is just a fun material. And the crazy thing is it's so simple to make. So this will really add a nice flair to some of your projects that you might be working on or your motion graphics. So let's jump in. And as always, I will upload this finished blend file to my Patreon. So those of you supporting the channel on Patreon will get access to this as well. So let's jump in and make some iridescent materials. So this is gonna be really simple. Let's go ahead and jump into a new scene in Blender. And we'll just start by selecting the default cube. And just for interest's sake, we'll model something super simple just to kind of visualize our iridescent material. So we're just gonna tab into edit mode with everything active. Just hit Control B or Command B and that'll bevel your cube. You can then roll the middle mouse button to roll in some more segments and then click. And then an optional thing is you can go Shift A inside of edit mode, just add in a cylinder and then just kind of go S shift Z and just scale it on just their Y and the X axis. And then you can go S Z, scale it up, something like that. And then just go to your face select and then just select the two faces on the end, go control B to bevel again, like so. And then with that still active, hit control L. You now have the whole thing active. And then in your front view, just go shift D R90 and hit enter. And then go shift D R Z90 and hit enter. So this is optional, but it's just a cool little kind of thing to demonstrate with. Now we're gonna go back into object mode. We're gonna right click and go shade smooth. And then let's go over to our render op, um, properties. Let's change the render engine from EV to cycles. And if you have a GPU, it's always good to use, but you could get away with CP. And then we're just gonna go down to our render and other than max samples, I'm gonna go with 45. There we go. We have a camera in our scene, so I'm just gonna press zero to go into camera view. I'm also going to go shift A, I'm gonna to go to my light options, add in an area light, and I'm gonna go G, I'm gonna go Z and move it up. And then under your light properties, it's up to you how strong you want it. I'm gonna go 300, and I'm gonna go with a size of two meters. Oops, two meters, there we go. And I'll just kind of rotate it, move it off to the side a bit. So if we were to press Z and go rendered, you can see this is what we have. Feel free to duplicate the light by going Shift D if you want more of the light. And you can always rotate it around. But for now, we just want this. So we're gonna select our object. We have our lights established. I'm gonna go over to our material properties. Because this is the default cube, it already has a material. If it doesn't, just hit plus to add a material. Let's just call it um, iridescent, which if I get the spelling wrong, I'm sorry, but I think it's I R I D E S C E N T. I think might have that wrong, but that's it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over into our shading workspace. We're going to go into camera view again. We're going to go Z and go render. And now we have our iridescent material here. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna drag this up, just give us a bit more space. And this is just our default principal shader. And it's really simple. The first iridescent material we're gonna make is super simple. All we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna click on search and type in the layer. We're gonna get a layer weight. And we're gonna drag the facing into the base color. And then we're gonna go Shift A, search. We're gonna get a ramp. So type in ramp and get the color ramp. Place it on here. And then come to the black value here and then just click on it. And let's change this to pure red. So we're just gonna come over to the RGB channel and drag the red all the way up. And then let's click on the end channel. Let's click on here. And we're gonna just make this green. So let's just drag the under the RGB the blue and the red down. And then let's click plus and in the middle, we'll grab this one and let's make the pure blue. So we want the blue all the way at one and the red and the green channels at zero. Okay, so now you can see this is what we have. To make this look even better, we're gonna drag it almost all the way up to metallic. There we go. 
And let's drag that roughness down a bit. And here we have just a fantastic looking iridescent material. Now you could always come and tweak the positioning of these colors a little bit for some nicer effect. But what you'll actually notice here, this looks very similar to a normal map. And that's kind of because normal maps use red, green, and blue channels. So you can see here, this is what we have. So we have this really awesome, striking looking iridescent material. It kind of changes as you look from different angles. Now this is just this one, but let's do one with glass. And that's a little bit different, but bear with me. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go to Mesh Options, add in a UV sphere. Let's just for now select this guy and go H to hide him. Select the UV sphere and just right click and go Shade Smooth. And then let's go to our camera view. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna go and give that a new material. Let's just call this glass underscore iridescent. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and get rid of this principal shader. And we're gonna go shift A search and get a glass BSDF. We're gonna take the glass and let's just go shift A search and we're gonna plug that into an add. So we're gonna get an add shader. And let's plug the glass into the add shader top input and let's plug the shader into the surface of the material output. And we're also gonna duplicate this glass two times, like so. So here you can see we have the three glasses and we're gonna also duplicate the add shader, plug it into the bottom of the previous add shader and then hook this one up in here and the bottom glass into the bottom of the add shader like so. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to the top glass color and we're gonna change this one to red. So let's just drag down all the channels except the red. So it's pure red. Let's just come here to the glass. We're gonna make this blue. So let's just drag down these two channels. So we only have the blue channel. And then at the bottom, as you can guess, we're also gonna do it with the green. So we're just gonna drag down the red and blue. Now we have the pure green here. Now what's really interesting is you'll notice with all of these colors going in here, this kind of looks just transparent, white. And that's simply because when you add these primary colors together, they make white. That's why when you split light, you get the colors. So what we wanna do is we wanna come in here and offset these IOR values. So the top one, we'll leave it 1.5. We'll come down and drop it by a point each time. So we're gonna make this one 1 1.4. And then we're gonna come down to the green and make the IOR 1.3. And now we have something really cool. It's hard to see without the right setup. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a um, plane and in the front view, we're just gonna rotate it 90 degrees, move it back and scale it up. Whoops, there we go, scale it up. And in the front view, I'll scale it on the X a little bit as well. And I'll add in a new camera in the front view and then moving that new camera back in the front view, we kind of have it looking front on like this. And now we can grab that background we've added in and we can just give it the material and let's just make that base color dark. So now if you go Z and go rendered, you can see this is what we have. Pretty cool. Now you may have to grab your lights and move them around a little bit to kind of get the look you're going for. Also another thing that might help with the glass is just to come in here and give it all just a little bit of roughness, but that could be hard doing it all to each one. So just add a value to the roughness and then just plug that value into all of the roughnesses of the glass. And then you can come here and give them all at the same time a value. So I'm gonna go 0.15 and now I have a little bit of roughness that's looking a bit better, I think. But yeah, this will obviously look better if you have some HDRI lighting or some environmental lighting and also if you render it out. Um, so let's just go ahead and I'm gonna go Alt H to bring back our previous example. I'm gonna move that guy to the side and move this guy here, just over to the side and I'll scale this down a bit, maybe rotate it to make it look interesting. And let's just see what this looks like. So here we have it like so. And what we're gonna do, we'll give this a test render. So once you're kind of happy with what it looks like, you can go ahead and save and go render and just render the image. 
And there we have it, some simple iridescent materials. Now, like I said, if you add some nice environmental lighting, like a HDRI, this is obviously gonna look a lot better. You could always add some roughness and surface imperfection to these materials. But this is just a general idea of how to get this sort of iridescent look on a material. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I will upload this file to my Patreon. So those of you who support the channel will get access to it. And I'll see you guys next time.